Chapter 13, The 10-Day Mental Challenge In order to take our lives to the next level we must realize that the same pattern of thinking that has gotten us to where we are will not get us to where we want to go. One of the biggest challenges I see in both individuals and corporations is that they resist change, their greatest ally, justifying their actions by pointing out that their current behavior is what got them to the level of success that they now enjoy. This is absolutely true and, in reality, a new level of thinking is now required in order to experience a new level of personal and professional success. To do this, we must once and for all break through the barriers of our fear and take control of the focus of our minds. Our old patterns of allowing our minds to be enslaved by the problems of the moment must be broken once and for all. In their place, we must establish the lifelong commitment to focus on the solutions and to enjoy the process. Throughout this book you've learned a wealth of powerful tools and strategies to make your life richer, fuller, more joyous and exciting. But if you just read this book and fail to use it, it's like buying a powerful new computer and never taking it out of the box, or buying a Ferrari and then letting it sit out in your driveway, collecting dust and grime. So let me offer you a simple plan for interrupting your old patterns of thinking, feeling, and behaving, a way that can help you condition these new, empowering alternatives and make them absolutely consistent. In truth, life is a balance. If we allow ourselves to become the kind of people who refuse to see the weeds that are taking root in our gardens, our delusions will destroy us. Equally destructive, however, is what happens to those people who, out of fear, constantly imagine the garden overgrown and choked with intractable weeds. We don't have to feel negative about weeds. They're part of life. We need to see them, acknowledge them, focus on the solution, and immediately do whatever it takes to eliminate their influence from our lives. Pretending they're not there won't make things better, neither will becoming inflamed with anger by their presence nor devastated by fear. Their continual attempt to be part of your garden is a fact of life. Simply remove them. And do it in an emotional state of playfulness or joy while you're getting the job done. Otherwise you'll spend the rest of your life being upset, because I can promise you one thing, there will be more weeds that continue to come up. And unless you want to live in reaction to the world every time problems occur, you need to remember that they're actually an important part of life. They keep you vigorous, they keep you strong, they keep you vigilant and noticing what needs to be done to keep the garden of your life healthy and rich. We need to practice this same approach in weeding the gardens of our minds. We have to be able to notice when we start to have a negative pattern, not beat ourselves up about it, and not dwell on it. But simply break the patterns as quickly as we discover them, and replace them with the new seeds of mental, emotional, physical, financial, spiritual, and professional success. How do we break these patterns when they show up? Simply remember the steps of knack you learned in Chapter 6. 1. You need to decide what you want. If you really want to feel a sense of passion, joy, and control over your life, which obviously you must, or you wouldn't be reading this now, then you know what you want. 2. You've got to get leverage on yourself. If you read this whole book and don't establish any new patterns, wouldn't that be an unbelievable waste of time? In contrast, how will you feel as you truly use what you've learned to take immediate control of your mind, body, emotions, finances, and relationships? Let your desire to avoid pain and induce massive pleasure drive you to make the changes necessary to take your life to the next level now. In order to accomplish this, you must 3. Interrupt the limiting pattern. The best way I know to do this is to simply go on a mental diet, that is, take a set period of time and take conscious control of all your thoughts. A mental diet is an opportunity to eliminate the negative and destructive patterns of thinking and feeling that inevitably come from living life in an emotionally reactionary and mentally undisciplined fashion. Here's your opportunity now to really apply all the new disciplines you've learned in the previous chapters. My challenge to you is simply this. For the next 10 days, beginning immediately, Commit to taking full control of all your mental and emotional faculties by deciding right now that you will not indulge in or dwell on any unresourceful thoughts or emotions for 10 consecutive days. It sounds easy, doesn't it? And I'm sure it could be. But those who begin it are frequently surprised to discover how often their brains are engaged in nonproductive, fearful, worrisome, 
or destructive thinking. In essence, if you decide to accept my 10-day challenge, it means that you've committed to putting yourself and keeping yourself in a passionately positive state, no matter what happens. For example, if someone does something that you believe is destructive or even hateful toward you, and you begin to find yourself becoming angry, you must immediately change your emotional state, regardless of the situation, during these 10 consecutive days. Remember, our goal is not to ignore the problems of life, but to put ourselves in better mental and emotional states where we can not only come up with solutions, but act upon them. Every great, successful person I know shares the capacity to remain centered, clear and powerful in the midst of emotional storms. If you decide that you're going to take on my 10-day challenge, and I sense you will, since you've made it this far in the book, then realize that for the next 10 days, you're going to spend 100% of your time on solutions, and no time on problems. There are four simple yet important rules to this 10-day challenge. So if you're going to take it on, remember the following. Rule 1. In the next 10 consecutive days, refuse to dwell on any unresourceful thoughts or feelings. Refuse to indulge in any disempowering questions or devitalizing vocabulary or metaphors. Rule 2. When you catch yourself beginning to focus on the negative, and you certainly will, you are to immediately use the techniques you've learned to redirect your focus toward a better emotional state. Specifically, use the problem-solving questions as your first line of attack, for example, what's great about this? What's not perfect yet? Remember, by asking a question like, what's not perfect yet? You're presupposing that things will be perfect. This will change your state. It doesn't ignore the problem, but it keeps you in the right state while you identify what needs to be changed. In addition, set yourself up for success each morning for the next 10 days by asking yourself the morning power questions. You can do them before you get out of bed or while you're in the shower, but make sure you do them right away. This will focus you in the direction of establishing empowering mental and emotional patterns each day as you awake. In the evening, use the evening power questions, or any questions you believe will put you in a great state before you drop off to sleep. Rule 3. For the next 10 consecutive days, make certain that your whole focus in life is on solutions and not on problems. The minute you see a possible challenge, immediately focus on what the solution could be. Rule 4. If you backslide, that is, if you catch yourself indulging in or dwelling on an unresourceful thought or feeling, don't beat yourself up. There's no problem with this as long as you change immediately. However, if you continue to dwell on unresourceful thoughts or feelings for any measurable length of time, you must wait until the following morning and start the 10 days over. The goal of this program is 10 consecutive days without holding or dwelling on a negative thought. This starting over process must happen no matter how many days in a row you've already accomplished the task. You may ask, how long can I focus on the negative before it's considered dwelling? To me, one minute of continual focus on what's wrong is dwelling. One minute is more than enough time for us to be able to catch ourselves and create a change. Our whole goal is to catch the monster while it's little. If I were you though, I'd give myself up to a maximum of two minutes to notice the challenge and begin to change your state. Two minutes is certainly enough time to identify that you're in a negative state. If you allow yourself to go as long as five minutes or more, you'll find the mental challenge won't accomplish its task. Instead, you'll just learn to vent your emotions more quickly. The goal is to knock things out before you ever get in a negative emotional state in the first place. By committing and following through on this mental challenge, you'll be giving yourself a break from limiting habits and flexing the muscles of empowerment. You'll be sending your brain a new message, commanding new results. You will be demanding empowering emotions, enriching thoughts, inspiring questions. By setting a higher standard for what thoughts you'll allow your mind to dwell on, you'll begin to notice the garbage and destructive patterns you use to blindly or lazily accept from yourself. And as a result, you'll find it difficult to ever go back to the old ways again. A word of caution, don't begin this 10-day commitment unless and until you are certain that you are going to live by it for the full length of time. If you don't start out with a sense of commitment, you certainly won't make it through the 10 days. This is not a challenge for the weak at heart. Let's face it, we all have our indulgences in life. 
If you're overweight, your indulgences may be chocolate fudge sundaes or double cheese pizza. When you diet, you say to yourself, enough is enough. This is where I draw the line. You hold yourself to a higher standard and enjoy the self-esteem that comes with that single, small, disciplined act. But we all have our mental indulgences too. Some people feel sorry for themselves. Some get angry in a way that subverts their own best interests. Some of us fail to focus on the things that need attention. My challenge to you is to decide that for 10 days, you will not allow yourself a single one of these destructive mental indulgences. What stands in the way of just deciding to banish them? Three things really. One is laziness. A lot of people know what they should do, but never quite get up the energy to do it. Many know their lives could be something more, yet they're sitting in front of the tube, eating junk food, depriving their minds and bodies of the fuel they need to spark new growth. The second obstacle is fear. All too often, the security of a mediocre present is more comfortable than the adventure of trying to be more in the future. So many people get to the end of their lives wondering what could have been, don't let this happen to you. The third challenge is force of habit. We have our old emotional patterns, the deadening force of routine. Like a plane on automatic pilot, our brain dredges up the same old responses it always has. This exercise is a way to get beyond all three and produce lasting changes with benefits that can multiply over time. This is your opportunity to make a true commitment. The truth is that once you experience life in this mentally vital and alive way, going back would disgust you. But if you ever find yourself getting off track, you have the tools to immediately put yourself back on the high road again. Remember, only you can make this 10-day mental challenge work. Only you can make the commitment to really follow through. So realize that this chapter is my personal challenge to you. It's an opportunity and an invitation to demand more from yourself than other people would ever expect, and to reap the rewards that come from this commitment. It's a time to put in practice what you've learned. But it's also a time to decide whether you're willing to make the commitment to make some simple yet powerful improvements in your life. At this point, you've learned the fundamental tools for shaping your life by making decisions. But now let's study the master system that's controlling every decision you make throughout your life. Understanding the basis of your own personal philosophy is accomplished by Chapter 14, Ultimate Influence, Your Master System